Baie welkom by ons sondag ochendienst Dit is so lekker om weer met julle die woord te deel I uh, hope all is well at home And it's good to see you again And thank you for watching uh, the service uh, following with us this morning God bless you We had three birthdays this week Emma Burger het vir jaar Baie geluk Emma Jy is een groot siening Ons is baie lief vir jou En geniet jou jaar wat voorle. En dan Arlena van Duit het ook verjaar hierdie week. Baie geluk Arlena, ons bid vir jou en ons vertrouw die Heere vir een wonderlijke jaar in jou leven wat voorleed. En dan het um, uh, Willien, Michelle's sissy, het ook verjaar hierdie week. Baie geluk, ons noem haar Linti en ons vertrouw die Heere vir een mooi jaar in elke area van jou leven. Kom ons luister na Michelle wat vir ochend die woord bedien, geniet het. En baie dankie dat jylle saam kyk. Good morning Community Family Church. Goeiemorgen familie. Is heerlik om vir oogend saam met jylle te kan wees. En, um, en ja, al laat die tent stel, al is dit nou op een ander manier. Maar ons het al redelijk gewoond geraak hier aan. So, ek hoop jy is lekker snoesig in jou bed. Toch onder die kombaars voor die TV. En um, ja, kom ons spring saam met die woord vir oogend. Ek hoop jylle het wonderlik in die geseende week gehad. Kom ons sluit ons oor en begin ons net eerst met gebed. Dankie Heere vir die wonderlijke ochend dat ons saam kan spandeer in die woord en dat die Heilige Gees ook um, ons leer en ons lei en dat die saad wat jy in ons hart plant sal vrug dra en opkom en groot vrug in ons leven dra in die tyd wat kom. Dankie daarvoor, dankie dat ons harte oop is om te ontvang um, die woord wat jy vir ochend het vir ons en, en, en dat jy ons elkeen bedien op een unieke manier in Jesus naam. Amen. Right, so discerning the times, it would be relevant, I think, to read from the book of Revelation. Um, if you just look, you know, you know, we don't know when Jesus is going to return, and that's the end time prophecies. There's a lot of end time prophecies throughout the Bible. But if we, we, we don't know, is Jesus going to come this year? Is he going to come next year? Is he going to come in 10 years' time? We have no idea, and the Bible says only God the Father knows when Jesus will come back for his church. Um, however, we ought to pay attention um, and discern the times. We don't. We have to be ready. We just don't know when Jesus is going to come. So let us be ready and not wait and procrastinate and I'll sort my life out tomorrow. But let's rather be ready today. So whenever Jesus comes, we'll be ready as his church to um, go and spend eternity. Eternity is a long time, so we better be ready to spend eternity with him. So we're going to jump right into the book of Joel this morning. Um, Joel is one of the minor prophets and perhaps one of the um, books in the Bible that are much less read, um, definitely much less than the popular Gospels. And um, only three chapters, so a very short book. You can go and read the whole book for yourself, quick, quick. Um, but I think there's a whole lot of lessons for us to learn from um, Joel's prophecies and these three chapters that are so relevant to our lives today and the times that we are, look, are living in. So, as ons het kyk oor wat oor die laaste vijf maanden in ons leven gebeur, het toe allemaal geskrambel het om sanitizers te gaan koop en om uh, maskers te gaan koop en kos aan te vul en skoolgoedies te koop, want ouwers het toe ons nou onderwijsers ook geraak en, en alles te kry om disinfect goedjes te gaan kry vir ons huis en, en alles wat ons nodig gehad het voordat um, lockdown officieel, of die insluitingstijdwerk officieel begin het. We ran around and we got everything ready. Why? Because the president made an announcement, a call to the nation and he told us this is what's going to happen. We are going to go into lockdown as a nation. So in not wanting to be caught unaware, we went to the stores, we got the, the disinfectants and the masks and the, everything that we would need for the time that we would be in lockdown. As there was no exact date, we thought it would be three weeks, but it was not precise date on it was so ons had all in gereedheid gekom. The bezigheden had in gereedheid, all had gereedheid gekom for this what gaan gebeur. So the president made a call to the nation and it was up to us whether we wanted to respond to his call or not. 
ons het niks te gedoen het nie. Ons kon geblij sit het by die huis en lakpian kon gekom het en ons kon, ge, kon besef het ooggriep. Ons is nie gereed nie. Nou moet ons kinders van die huis af leer en ek kan hier penne en boekwede gaan koop. In die winkel nie, ek het nie, my, my, my data is nie uitgesorteer nie, my kinders kan nie online um, huiswerk doen of leer of wat ook al nie. En, so dat was baie dinge, dit was ons kees of ons gereed wou gekom en vir, vir die oproep wat die president vir die nasie gaan maak. En. So it's pretty much what, is, what happened in the book of Joel as well. Things look bleak during this time of this prophecy um, of Joel. It looked bleak and there was a call and an alarm that went out um, to the nation via Joel's prophecy. And um, the people were given an opportunity whether they would respond to this call. And for us as well, this call is relevant to our lives as well, for our eternity, for our future. Do we want to respond to the call? That is up to you whether you would like to respond to this call, to get ready for the return of Jesus, for the second coming. So we have this opportunity um, for today, but also for our future. The Bible was written as a roadmap for God's people, for his church, for Christian living, but not only for us. The Bible was written for every single human being, saved and unsaved, and especially also for the unsaved, to, because Jesus wants everybody to come to be reconciled to the Father. It's a call to the church to live holy lives and be ready for the return of Jesus, but it's also a call for the unsaved to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. That call to serve the Father, that sound of the alarm, is very much what the book of John is all about. And you'll read it over and over and over as you go through the three chapters in the book of Joel to get ready for the return of Jesus. So um, in Joel 1, and you can go and read verse 1 to 11 on your own, Joel speaks and he prophesies to the nation amidst dire, dire circumstances, times of chaos and carnage. Um, on the earth during that time. Major destruction left by major disaster. Their crops have been totally destroyed. There was nothing for their um, cattle and their sheep to feed on. It was burnt to the ground. There was nothing left. What, what the plagues and the swarms of locusts and everything didn't destroy, the fire destroyed it. They were hungry. There was a hunger, a famine on the earth during that time. And if though that isn't enough. There was also a severe drought during this period. So we cannot even begin to imagine what they were going through during the time of this prophecy. And um, we are so easy to complain. But if I read this, I'm like, oh Lord Jesus, forgive me. I've got nothing to complain about for what we are, have been um, suffering over our hundred and what, 40, um, 50, 150 odd days in lockdown. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> if I look at this, we have had food every day. We could open our taps and drink a glass of water. So we actually have very little to complain about. Joel paints a pretty bleak picture um, of a people who are at their lowest and feeling isolated and feeling utterly defeated. So let's pick it up in Joel 1 verse 12 and it says, Surely joy has withered away from the sons of, man, of men. So a sadness filled the air and the people were left feeling defeated during that time. Defeated in their mind, but not destroyed. So there's a big difference. You can feel down and these people, Joel says, surely joy has withered away from the sons of men. So they were, they were down and they were low. But they were not destroyed and Joel was sent by God to bring hope to his people. So we're going to pick it up from Joel 1 verse 13. But, but um, the, the circumstances surrounding this particular portion of scripture is where Joel comes in and he lifts up the people and he brings them up to a higher vantage point to, to be able to see ahead. And, and yes, it's a mess out there and they have nothing more to lose. But, but he says, I'm bringing you a message of hope and I'm bringing you direction from the Lord. So in Joel verse 13, Joel 
teaches them to realize that sin has consequences in our lives. We can't, cannot just continue to live you know, our sinful lives and think that there will be no consequences for our sins. And he implores them to have remorse for their sin. He summons them to consent to consecrate themselves and uh, and also to a call to pray. So then in verse 14 it says, and cry out to the Lord. So Joel says, amidst your circumstances, amidst what's happening in your lives at the moment, don't think your sin doesn't have consequences. Consecrate yourselves and cry out to the Lord. Seek God in your circumstances and amidst whatever is happening in your life. Cry out to the Lord. And then he warns them, to um, that the return of Jesus is really close. So in verse 15, he says, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. So don't put this off any longer. Don't procrastinate any longer. This is the time. Your time is now to sort your life out, to be reconciled with Jesus, to repent of your sin, to, re to, to, to turn away from the sinful ways that you have been living in, to seek God and um, to heed the signs of the time that the coming of Jesus is close. And then in Joel 2, the sound of the alarm goes out, and this is Joel prophesying. So as I've spoken to you about the sound of the alarm, the, the call to the nation, that the president got everybody together, we sat in front of our TVs, we were listening to every word of what was going to happen, this was new to us, this was... Um, this has never happened to us before, so we paid heed. Um, the, this was a sound that was going out, an alarm, a call that was going out to the nation during that time. Joel 2 verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion, which is a type of the church, and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming For It is at hand. So it's a warning that went out that, that, that Joel said, sound the alarm, let everybody gather, let nobody be left out. Everybody needs to get this message. This is urgent. So whenever a trumpet, trumpet call in biblical times, remember when we ministered a few um, months back, uh, we've lost, lost track of time, it's day, 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 so uh, weeks, months, whatever back, I ministered on um, um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, and I spoke about Nebuchadnezzar, who sent out a decree. So the 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 people went and they blew the trumpets and everybody listened. So same thing here. It was their way to call everybody um, together. So when the sound of the alarm went out, people would leave ex everything that they were doing. They would stop in their tracks and they would gather for the message was an important one and they needed to hear the, the message. So they were summoned to the address or to this call. So whilst not living in denial of what we are surrounded with, let us discern the times and let us heed the call of, um, that God is calling us here in the book of Joel for us today. Let us heed the trumpet and the sound of the call, the urgency of the sound of this alarm. In verse 2 to 11, he prophesies end times and God's army rising up to fight the battle. So let us be ready to fight the battle. And this is probably one of my favorite portions of scripture in, in the, the three chapter, chapters of Joel. So from Joel 2, verse 7 to 11, he says, and this is what I want to encourage you with. Man, be bold. As Christians, let's grow a spine. Let's be bold. Let's be warriors for God. Let's be ready. We are busy with the armor of God in the life groups and it blows my mind every week um, when we do this Bible study by Priscilla Shira and I am so, you know, it's just like, whoa, we are ready. God has given us all the tools to fight this battle. So look at this, how much more encouraging can you get? Now remember, this call went out, these words, this prophecy went out during the drought and they were hungry, they were thirsty, the cattle were dying on the land, they had nothing left, they had nothing more to lose. So dire circumstances and Joel gets up and he brings them up to this high advantage point and he says, look, and he says, they run like mighty men, we are God's mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war, everyone marches in formation and they do not break ranks. Together, we stand and we do it together. We information, we are there, we are on our place. 
They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they lunge between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter at the windows. They, the earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives a voice before his army. God, Jesus himself is the leader of his army, of us, who, um, his children. Um, he leads us into and through this battle into conquering. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? We need to be at the right side of this battle. I definitely don't want to be on the other side and have Jesus with his army coming for me. I want to fight in Jesus' army. I want to um, be in formation, march in formation, in formation and not break ranks. I want to run on the wall and, and be, um, yeah, be ready for when Jesus comes and, 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 and do this for the Lord. Be men of valor, church. He says in chapter one, this is where you, and, and this is where we are right now, um, where the cry goes out. But in chapter two, now they're getting ready to fight. So in chapter one, we see the destruction, the desolation, and the utter chaos. And then in chapter two, he says, but gear up. Get ready. Jesus is the captain of our army and we are in God's army. So let's get ready and, and, and do this. So prophecy of um, positive, positivity and hope going on of men and women who are courageous and strong fighting in the army of Jesus. And then from chapter 2 verse 12, there's a call to repentance. So in the call to repentance, we pick it up from verse 12. It says, Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning, and rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. So we have spoken about the tempter who comes to tempt us, but then he leads us to sin. And, but it's, it's our choice. He might lead us there, but we are the ones who choose whether we would like to sin or not. And then um, he persuades us that um, it's not that bad, you know, and our, our conscience starts to get seared and our hearts hardened and our, our minds numb to the sin. And as we do it over and habitually live in innocent and we start to believe that that the evil that we do or the sin that we do has no consequences and that that voice of our conscience gets silenced it's 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 a disregard and a disbelief for what is true and a, a drawing away from 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 God and what is right and we start to sin without fear a very, very dangerous place to be in, to, to be in, to start to sin without fear. So in this portion of scripture, um, Joel is saying, come back, God is saying, God is saying, come back to me, come back with, with, with all of who you are, um, don't be lied to by the enemy, sin has consequences, it's time to repent of the ways that you are living in. Return to the Lord and rend your hearts. So it's a call to repentance, a turning away from sin, a turning back to God, but also to render our hearts. Um, render means to provide and to give. So to give back our hearts to the Lord, to break your heart before God. So he says, don't rend your garments. So don't tear your garments, but tear your heart. Break. Let your heart break before God. Let it become soft again in the hands of Jesus. So come to him in humble and repentance and vulnerability and, and acknowledge God as the one, that the only one and the only true, true God and acknowledge him as a God, as your God. And then also to rededicate our lives to God the Father. So in verse 13, he says, return to the Lord. So rededicate your lives to the Lord. So perhaps you have been serving God for a long time and then... Um, Stopped going to church, stopped being involved in a church family, 
and slowly but surely you fell back into your old ways and your old sin sinful nature and um, before you knew it there was a big divide between you and the Lord so then this morning's message is for you this call to repentance is for you this trumpet in jail is blowing for you to come back to Jesus so then verse um, 15 to 16 says speaks of con consecration and sanctification so getting rid of all that nonsense in our lives and turning to God and then in verse 17 there's another call to pray so pray Joel every chapter they speak of a uh, Pray, come, come, uh, come, pray. It's a call to pray. Chapter one, chapter two, another call to pray, and then finally, finally in verse eighteen to twenty-seven, it speaks of restoration, and um, this is very exciting because God doesn't take us where we are and He leaves us like that. No, as we draw closer to God, He draws closer to us, and restoration comes. So restoration, Joel prophesied restoration into the lives of the people who were living in those times, and God will restore to us as well, whatever we have lost here. This message and these words are for us too. He continues to prophesy of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and then in Joel 3, He prophesies of the end times and gives us a task as the children of God. So Joel 3 verse 13 to 14 says, um, no, let's take it from verse 9. It says, proclaim this among the nations, prepare for war, wake up the mighty men, and let, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come all you nations and gather together all around. Cause your strong mighty ones to go down there, O Lord. Let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickles for the harvest is ripe. Family, we have to put the sickles in. The harvest is ripe. We cannot continue to live selfish lives. There's many, many, many people. If Jesus will have to come right now, that will not be in heaven with us. The harvest is ripe. We have to share the good news of the gospel and draw people back to Jesus. Come go down for the wine press is full, the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Verse 14 says, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. So many people at a place in their lives where they know. It might even be you that are ministering to this morning. In that place where you know you can't continue with the life that you are living. But you haven't made the decision yet. Yet when you close your eyes, these things are in your mind. And you are thinking and pondering it and knowing that you've got to make right with the Lord. But you haven't yet. So this message is for you. You might be one of those multitudes in the valley of decision. We are commissioned to get ready and to go out and bring the harvest in. This is a commission for us. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's our calling and our duty to what can we take to heaven except people we can only take people none of what we work for on earth will be able to go with us but you can take people your neighbor your friend your family your household um, your acquaintances your random people that you meet your colleagues at work these are the people that that we can take with us to heaven we can take people with us and uh, you never know what small act of kindness um, gesture, random act of kindness, word of encouragement or sharing a scriptural truth will mean in the life of somebody else to lead them back to Jesus. The good news is for everyone on earth. All of the human beings that God created, it's not just for the Christians. The good news is for everyone. God doesn't want a single soul to be left in a uh, to be left behind when Jesus comes back for his church, but for all to come to him. Joel 2 verse 32 says, And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this might be for you this morning. Calling on the name, you might be sitting in that valley of decision and thinking, must I do this? I really want to, with all my heart, I want to serve Jesus, but 
it's just so difficult, my friends, my this, my that. I want to encourage you this morning and say, be a mighty man and woman of valor. Stand up for what you believe in. Heed this call, heed the sound of this alarm. This alarm is going out for you, for each one of us to, to remind those of us who serve God to, to march in rank and to not break rank. For those who have fallen away or perhaps never served Jesus before, um, to be you be the one to stand up and put your hand up and say, I'm going to take a chance on you, God. So I'm going to leave this, this world behind. And um, that doesn't mean that you cut off everybody from your life. You must be the light of the world. You must be the salt in this world and, and share. And they must see what God is doing in your life and come to him. Let it draw him, um, them to Jesus as well. So it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. All we need to do, do is call on the name of the Lord. So in summary realize so that's our first r realize that sin has consequences take heed of the call the alarm and that which the bible is um, telling us so realize then our second r is repent of our sins whatever is standing between you and your relationship with god the father repent of that um, that should not be there. Whatever you have been, when I said these words, things have popped into your mind, those are the things that I'm talking about. That's what you've got to repent of. So realize, repent, and then render. Render your heart. Make, let your heart be soft before um, the Lord Jesus, before God the Father. Let it break. And let, um, He knows he, the things that you're hiding, He already knows. So you can run to him with anything. He knows already and he still loves you. So let your heart be soft and gentle and let it just break before God the Father. Then rededicate. So realize, repent, render and rededicate. Rededicate our lives to Jesus Christ. If you have slipped up in your, and, or, or slipped back from, in your Christian walk with Jesus, then this morning's call is for you. The alarm is sounding for you rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then, our final R is restoration. So, it's the outflow, um, to our response to, God, to God's call, restoration. God doesn't take us and leave us as we are. We seek Him, He seeks us. He spends time with us. His Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us and He teaches us and He guides us and He helps us on our Christian walk and restoration. Um, comes back into your life. So realize, repent, render, rededicate, and the outflow of that will be restoration. So I have two more words for you. The first one is commission. You have been saved for mission. So I love it when the kids play these TV games, when they get so into it, and that's a mission, and they're on this mission. You are also on a mission. We are all on a mission, and you've been commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ, and in Joel, you've been commissioned. There are so many in this valley of decision. Help them to make that choice. It might take one word or one hug from you to get them and draw them back to Jesus. So you are commissioned, you are saved for mission, you are equipped for the task, you have everything you need, all the tools, you've got the armor of God, you are ready, you've got the Holy Spirit living in you, you've got the Bible. Now, my last word is go. So you've good, been commissioned to go. Mark 16 verse 15 says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So that doesn't mean that you have to walk around with your Bible and bang everybody over the head that does things wrong, but lead in love and, and show the Jesus way to your world. Let this be a time of preparation for each of us, but also a time of focus for the task at hand. So realize, repent, render, rededicate. Restoration will come. You've been commissioned to go. So let's focus on that. I love you, family. Thank you for spending this morning with me. It was this album for my sweet lekker show with you. So, I hope you had a lot of nuggets said in your mouth. You got to get your word out and that this is a lekker fruit to draw in each one of our lives. I will not be able to finish with the word. So, thank you, Lord, for not beating around the bush. In your word, your prophecies and your the scriptures are really straightforward, and we 
we cannot not but understand what you are saying. Your call is clear, your alarm is loud, and your call for us to repent and be restored and 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 to rend our hearts it's very clear and ringing loud this morning so i thank you god that whoever is listening to this message this morning and may be standing in this valley of decision to be bold and to be courageous and to be men and women of valor who will stand up and say um lord here i am use me to rise up a mighty army for you, God, and to as Christians not become lax in our Christian world living, but to keep our focus on the task at hand, to live lives that are pleasing to you, but also to not forget those around us that have not given their hearts to you and to be the light and the salt on this earth. Thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy in, our, in and over our lives. Thank you for your word and the seed that is growing in our spirits as it is ministered and in the time ahead. Thank you for your great, great love that we can never comprehend how great your love is for us. We love you, Lord, but we thank you so much for loving us first. In Jesus' name, amen. Baie dankie familie, geniet een wonderlijke, wonderlijke en een geseende week. Laat ons weet hoe dit met julle gaan. Ons is lief vir julle. Lekker blij. So I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the wave Dear Father God, Today I surrender my life to you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin and for raising him back to life so that I can spend eternity with you. I am now your child. You are now my Father and your Holy Spirit now lives in me. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I love you. Amen. When oceans rise, my soul rests in your embrace, for I am yours, you are mine, oh, so I
will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior.